Hey guys, how's it going? So it's a gorgeous day today. I think it's gonna be a high of like 75 or 76, sunny. We've got three different projects we're working on around town. So we're gonna finish up planting here at our local community college first. We have one planter, which is right behind me, and then a long flower bed along the greenhouse. And then we're gonna to go to the children's relief nursery and plant up the four pots in front of that building. And then we're gonna head up to the church that Aaron and I go to, and there's, I think, six or seven pots that we're gonna be planting up there this year. So point of reference, you can see these two long planters that we planted up, oh, has it been like one week ago or so? They're doing really well, kind of a weird time of day. There's a lot of dappled light on them, but perfect light conditions for these, you guys. And then we are planting up this one right here. This one gets quite a bit more sun. So I've tailored the plants accordingly, but you can see it's a nice big bed right here. Last year we did Prince Tut and some uh, Diamond Mountain Euphorbia and some Coleus and Begonias. It was really pretty, but I do think I missed it just a little bit. I think that the plants I put in here last year would have thrived a little bit more had they gotten a little bit more shade. Uh, so this year we're using a uh, different mix of plants. We're gonna have a Skyrocket Penicetum uh, centerpiece, and then we're gonna use some Colorblaze Coleus, the Wicked Witch, which can handle sun or shade, and then some Supertunias and Sweet Potato Vine. It's gonna be a really pretty blend, and I think that it's gonna do really well here. So let's go get the plants, get this one planted up, and then I'll show you. Also, I have Amy's help again today, which has been so awesome, and I'm sure we'll see Rosa show up here with her water tank here shortly. All right guys, first project of the day done. This is already gorgeous, I love it. So three of the Skyrocket Penicetums, which get pretty good size, I wanna say 36 inches, uh, with really pretty seed heads. Then we've got the Wicked Witch Coleus, which is in the Color Blaze series, which I already mentioned before, means that they can take both sun or shade. I do notice if you're gonna be using one of those Coleus in a full sun location, they do require a little bit more water but it's perfect for containers because typically they're on an everyday watering schedule anyway, so it really does work out. Also with the Color Blaze Coleus, they have been bred to either not bloom at all, or they usually wait until way late in the season to start blooming, so you don't have to constantly deadhead them. With a lot of the older varieties of Coleus, they start pushing blooms right away, which if you like that look, it's awesome because they are a pollinator attractor, uh, but typically when we're growing Coleus, we don't want anything to distract from the, the look of the leaves. That's why we grow them. It's kind of like, for me, hostas. I don't really prefer hosta blooms. I grow them for the, the foliage texture. So anyway, it's really nice that you don't have to have that, that uh, element, I guess, that chore throughout the summer. And then we ringed around the whole thing with Supertunia Vista Jazzberry and the Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime Sweet Potato Vine, which I love that this is uh, like mirrors the color of the edge of the leaf of the coleus. I think it's just a really bright, beautiful blend, just utilizing four different types of plants in this huge thing. It's gonna be, well, it already does look striking to me. Okay, the next project is actually across this lawn right at that greenhouse. So this is what we're dealing with here, roughly 45 feet long-ish and four feet deep. And they have a few things in here that they just told me not to worry about. I think they may come in after we're done planting and when they have time and they'll pop whatever's in here out. Uh, I think that looks like strawberries and maybe some Atlas roses, which would be kind of a nice compliment in here. I don't know, maybe they should leave those. But last year we used three different plants. We had Vertigo Penicetum as our backdrop, phenomenal. And then we used an uh, Angelonia, the Angel Face Super Blue, I think is what it was called. When we planted them, they were really little and then they kind of shocked because it was so hot out. And by the end, I think in terms of vigor, it couldn't really compete with the other two plants. So the Vertigo and then we used Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, which those two are super aggressive plants. So in the end, we did have some purple uh, blooms kind of popping through, which was really pretty, but I just feel like this year we'll have a really nice blend of plants that are compatible maybe a little bit more. You never know though. So here's what we've got. Skyrocket Penicetums, we'll do little groupings of those. We've got some Salvia, the Play in the Blues. 
We've got a whole bunch of cannas that we grew last year. These are the Cleopatra cannas. I had them in containers out by the greenhouse. In fact, I think I planted some in a video and then we stored them over the winter and I potted them up this spring and they've grown on beautifully. So I thought that they would be a really pretty co uh, color complement because they are a bright yellow and red. And I thought that would look pretty with the blue salvia and the white supertunia, that one right there. So that's the Vista Snowdrift. That will be our front layer. So we'll get all of these laid out, planted, and then I'll give you a tour. All done, you guys. This is gonna be really pretty. So in the beginning, it always looks a little scant and we give a lot more space to the things in the back because they just get pretty good size, even though they don't look it right now. So what we did was a line of the Skyrocket Penicetum. So we did two per kind of uh, rectangle here, one on either side of a grouping of three of the Cleopatra cannas, which these will get three to four feet tall. They get pretty good size around. So that'll be a really pretty bold statement. And then we did three Play in the Blues kind of ringing around the front of that. And then the Supertunia Vista Snowdrifts, which will get enormous. So you can see here another couple of grasses with the grouping of the cannas. And it's interesting how these cannas grow so different. So you'll have green with the red stripes, some that are all green, and some that are all that burgundy color. Just such an interesting plant. And it's so fun to be able to use these in a different application, not at the house, um, but to try them out somewhere different. And these supertunias just get so big that they'll just be probably <laughs> out to here in the end. And here's a look from the other direction. So this one pretty much gets sun all day. It's on the north side of the greenhouse, but you can see it's far enough away that it's getting sun. It's not being shaded. Uh, so anyway, these plants should thrive, do really well. It'll be an interesting kind of before and after, I think. All right, so that wraps up our projects down here at the community college for this year, other than coming back to show you guys how they're doing. So we are gonna head to the Children's Relief Nursery next. Before we leave, I just wanted to peek in the greenhouse to look at their tables. It's always fun to see different setups. Their fans are running, but there's nothing growing in here at the moment. Hmm. All right, here we are, Children's Relief Nursery. Here are the pots. So you might remember when we planted these evergreens, junipers. They have gotten a, a touch wild, but they're looking really good. So I'm gonna probably like try to tip this one, straighten that out just a little bit. Um, they all have drip to them, which is awesome. These will remove the grasses from those pots, but really all we need to do is recharge the soil a bit with some biotone and then put some super tunias in. So let's get it done. All done. What we ended up doing, we did the same for each pot so that it's a really striking display in the end, but a Sweet Caroline, Sweetheart Lime, Sweet Potato Vine, which will be a nice bright pop. I like to use pinks here a lot because it's a kind of a, bl a blue shade. The building, it's like a blue gray and then there's a blue ceiling. And I think pink and blues look really good together. So we have the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, Vista Bubblegum, Vista Snowdrift, and the Violet Star. So that is the blend in all four of the containers, along with the juniper centerpiece. And then in these, we removed the grass and did a, a Vista Jazzberry and a Sweetheart Lime, just to kind of echo a little bit of the color and texture that's in the pots below. And that took us about 20 minutes. <laughs> that was so fast. Uh, so we are gonna head up to the church now and get those pots done. Here we are. This is just a little sitting area and this is where all the pots are. So we've got two kind of flanking that opening. There's one right in the center, two along this area, which are all full sun. And then there are two toward the interior, which are more shade. So I've got some shade plants as well. I think this one might 
This one might be in shade all the time, but it might get a little bit of morning sun. This one might get a little bit of morning sun. I'm not sure, but I think they'll be okay with the plants we brought. So Amy is working on taking tags out of plants here, but I've got them all organized. I actually did it at home to where each flat represents one pot. So let me take this one over here just to show you what we've got going. So every pot is gonna be a little bit different, but we've got a centerpiece for each one. So like in this one, we're gonna use an unplugged pink centerpiece. And then we've got some white geraniums right here, which honestly, I had them in our greenhouse a little bit too close together. So I think they're gonna flourish now that they are out. You can see some buds starting. Grab the other two here. So these need to be deadheaded clearly uh, throughout the season. Usually once a week, you can go through and kind of pop off anything that looks spent. And then we're gonna fill in around the edge with a Superbina Imperial Blue. Isn't that what it's called? Then we've got a Supertunia. Vista Jazzberry, that looks really pretty with the unplugged pink, and a Violet Night Lobularia, which will look so pretty once it bushes out and kind of comes out this fence a little bit. So that's how I have it worked kind of, you know, every flat has everything for one pot. So we'll get everything set and planted, and then again, I'll give you a tour of how it looks. done they're all different so it makes it really fun and interesting in this space i think the one i'm most excited about though is the one that i used a bunch of coleus in this one right here it's just got such a different look to it i used three different kinds of coleus a couple different kinds of potato vine and then the only bloom is the diamond frost euphoria which is a very different unique kind of bloom but very much so a statement i think it gives it kind of a soft bright pop there. So three different kinds of color blaze coleus. Two of the larger growing varieties are these here. This is lime thyme, which always brings a nice bright pop. And then the wicked witch, which I love. I like how these two are tied together and that this one has the burgundy leaf with the chartreuse margin. So it kind of echoes the color of the lime thyme. And then this one is a brand new one for next year. It's a color blaze mini me watermelon. So it's uh, a little bit more compact growing think about like foot to not even quite two feet. So a foot to a foot and a half tall, uh, maybe a foot to a foot and a half wide. So it's a little bit more appropriate for smaller areas. It's got a really kind of wild look to it. A lot smaller leaf structure, really fun. And then we've got the Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime Sweet Potato Vine. And we have the Sweet Caroline Upside Black. So this one has a trailing and a climbing growth habit. So you can use it, you know, as a, um, trailer to go down the side of a pot. If you wanted to put like a little trellis or something in the center, it would also climb up the trellis, which would be really quite fun to watch. So yeah, I think that this one's just a fun, different blend of plants. It'll be fun to see what this one does going forward. This shade planter is a little bit more simple, only using three different varieties of plant. Uh, you know, the begonia, sweet potato vine, and Prince Tut. And then we'll just do a quick walkthrough of all these full sun ones. So we already talked about this one, just a nice blend of purples, pinks, and white. And then I love this one. It's because of this. I really wanna see what this one does. So we've got a Laguna Sky Blue Lobelia, which the older varieties of Lobelia used to not be able to handle our heat, but we'll see how this one does. And then we've got Jazzberry, Vista Jazzberry, three of those, and then a Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Raven, so a nice dark colored uh, sweet potato vine, which I think contrasts the bloom color of the Jazzberry beautifully. And then a Lobularia here. Then we've got the classic purple fountain grass in this container, and then the Bubblegum Super Bells Plum, and the kiwi sweet potato vine. It's just a really pretty blend. And then this container right here, I used three of the super beanas. I kind of wanted to talk about these because it seems like whenever I plant them, they're initially kind of a 
wild, like mangy, not gonna lie, looking plant. <laughs> they usually have these really long arms and they're not super dense and they're usually heavily rooted in their cans. So once they get out and start rooting in, they really do start to thicken up fairly quickly. I mean, one could come in and shear these up just a little bit so that the plant's not sending energy into these long arms, but it can kind of encourage more new growth toward the base, so that's totally an option. But they do really well for us in our area. So I'm super happy with them, was so excited about this gorgeous color. I think it looks pretty with the canna and the super tunia. And then this uh, lantana, it looks really gorgeous with that. Love using a little pop of yellow. And last but not least, we have this container, which I use some of the same elements that I used in some of our urns at home. As our centerpiece, we have Graceful Grass's Blue Mohawk. It's a type of juncus or soft rush. It is a very soft grass. The individual blades are kind of tube shaped. They're round. And I think it brings a really cooling element to this container. We've got a new Osteospermum, which I've showed you in a previous video. Uh, this is a Bright Lights Horizon Sunset, I believe. Isn't that gorgeous? So this one's new for next year. It looks really pretty with both the Sweet Caroline Raven and the Super Bells Plum because of the center. Like right here in the center, we've got some of that dark kind of almost black. And then we've got the Super Bells Plum, which mirrors right there at the base of the petals. I think it just ties them all together beautifully. And then a Super Tunia Violet Star. And you guys, that is gonna be it for today's project. What a good feeling to have everybody's pots filled up, all the flower beds done. Uh, we've got a lot yet to do at our own house just because it's been so cool that our spring planters, they still look pretty good, but I know in just a week's time, they're gonna start to look fairly bad because we've got some warm temperatures coming up. So we'll be showing you a lot of those coming up. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.